Dear students, today we will be discussing the numerical solution of swing equation. So in the previous lectures we have already seen some applications of swing equation and earlier we have derived the equation also. So uh, from those applications and from the discussions you, you might be understanding that swing equation is an important concept uh, which will be helping you to understand the uh, operation of this particular synchronous machine and during disturbances how the load load angle is varying and disturbance occurs now the issue that we have is that swing equation is an plot between load angle and the power that is uh, being delivered so that is a uh, angle uh, plot between delta and p now we need to find out a relationship between delta and time so then only you will have a solution for that particular curve that is at what time your delta is at this particular value that is important from the circuit breaker perspective where you are trying to close your circuit breaker so you have to design your circuit breaker in such a way that your stability is remaining intact so so in order to find out the time at which the circuit breaker is to be closed that is the clearing time you need to find out the clearing angle and uh, so you should have a relationship between the delta and the time so here we will have two methods which is discussed uh, in the syllabus or which is being referred in the syllabus first one is your step by step method and then you have Runge Kutta method so in the step by step method you will be uh, trying to find out uh, the solution for swing equation or delta uh, with the value of time in a step by step manner you start you start with some value or the initial values of delta and the power then from that values you will be calculating the uh, future values hmm? or the new values of delta which ultimately gives you the swing equation or you are trying to build your swing curve in a step by step manner in doing so you are also getting the value of uh, time also along with that hmm? or you are basically uh, keeping time as a reference and you are building up the this particular swing equation so we will see how this is being done so uh, clearing angle is one important concept that you hmm, need to understand so that we have already covered now critical clearing angle relates to hmm, the maximum angle at which the maximum load angle at which your fault can be cleared hmm, in order to keep keep your system stable so if you go beyond that point your system may not be uh, remaining in a stable condition stable operating condition so corresponding to that you have a clearing time also so you need to find a relationship between or some relationship between your delta and the time okay at what time you have a particular value of delta coming in the system so we are uh, moving forward with some assumptions so the first one is that uh, you have an term known as accelerating power PA hmm? PA for a machine generator is PM minus P or in certain textbook it will be PS minus P mechanical power minus the electrical output so P is EV by X sin delta Okay, so that you know. So you have an accelerated power computed. Um, first of all, you'll be dividing um, your entire process into different time intervals. Um, okay, different time intervals delta t. So at each interval, you are trying to calculate the value of accelerating power, delta, speed that is d delta by dt, such such quantities. So then you will have certain calculations which can be uh, done. Mm, on a paper and then ultimately you will get the curve so you will be assuming that accelerating power computed at the beginning of the interval is constant from the middle of the preceding the preceding interval to the middle of the interval that is considered that is you have these are intervals 
ओके सो दीज आर इंटरवल्स सो यू हैव दिस इज अ स्टेप बाई स्टेप प्रोस कर्व ऑफ दिस पावर सो फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट अप टू दिस पॉइंट दिस इज वन इंटरवल ओके द टाइम इज इंक्रीजिंग सो द पावर दैट इज कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऑफ वन इंटरवल मिडिल ऑफ वन इंटरवल अप टू द मिडिल ऑफ द अदर इंटरवल रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट सो दैट इज अशन that we have and second one is uh, d delta by dt is constant throughout any interval hmm? at the value computed at the middle of the interval that is what is d delta by dt it's a speed okay angular velocity so the angular velocity will be constant in an interval so if you consider this interval the angular velocity will be constant at this particular interval okay assuming angular velocity be to be constant and your power is constant from middle of one interval up to middle of the other interval okay and then you can get the value of delta we'll see how this delta is uh, computed so these are the two two assumptions that you have one is accelerating power pa and the other one is d delta by dt so this has to be see this has to be constant p a is constant from middle of one interval to middle of the other interval and d delta by dt is constant throughout the interval that you consider now d delta by dt hmm, at some interval hmm, that is interval between hmm, n minus 1 by 2 hmm, this is n minus 1 by 2 this point n minus 1 by 2 And n minus three by two. So if you consider the change between these two points, n minus one by two and n minus t three uh, by two, these are the two time points. Hmm. So that will be omega dash n minus one by two and omega dash n minus three by two. Hmm. Okay. So this this particular uh, values are two different speeds hmm. at two different intervals. So this change in angular uh, speed. okay why why do you consider this this value because you have constant acceleration hmm? pa is constant from middle of an interval to one so you have a constant pa here so that is given by pa n minus 1 so from n minus 1 1 by 2 to n minus 3 by 2 you have pa of n minus 1 pa of n minus 1 okay so this is uh given by uh, from the same equation that is d square delta by dt square is equal to 1 by m into pa where this is d delta by dt so you have one delta t coming here you are balancing the equation by multiplying with delta t so the pa by m into delta t gives you omega delta omega that is omega dash into n minus 1 by 2 minus omega dash into n minus 3 by 2 Okay, so that gives this particular equation. Similarly, change in delta over the interval, this particular interval, hmm? over any interval, hmm? that is delta delta, hmm? delta delta is change in this hmm? value. That is, this is delta delta. and this value of delta is varying from n minus hmm, 1 to n delta n delta n minus delta n minus 1 is given by delta delta so that is between the time periods n minus 1 and n hmm? so here you are in this particular interval your angular velocity is omega dash into n minus 1 by 2 corresponding to delta delta n Okay, now your delta delta n is given as omega dash into n minus omega two into delta delta. Okay, because d delta by dt is omega. Now similarly, delta delta of n minus one is given by omega dash into n minus three by two into delta delta. So this is the next interval that you consider. Okay, so if you consider this particular 
can just change the color if you take this particular hmm, change in delta so that will be between these two intervals so corresponding to that your speed will be this mega dash into n minus 3 by 2 okay so that you get now when you take the difference between these two delta n minus delta delta of n minus 1 you will be getting omega n minus 1 by 2 minus omega n minus 3 by 2 into delta delta so you can substitute for this value from this equation okay so you will be getting p a n minus 1 by m into delta t squared you have one delta t here and you have another delta t here so you have delta t squared or you can get delta n is equal to delta delta n is equal to delta delta n minus 1 plus some value now this is the current change this was the previous change that is in previous interval so if you know the value of previous change in the previous interval you can you can find out the value of the change in the current interval so that's that's how you built up the curve and and again you, you can take any value of delta 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 t generally you will be taking it as 0 0.5 seconds hmm? that you can assume at the beginning of the your calculation now delta n is this is same equation now this particular equation this is equation shows change in torque angle during any given interval will be equal to change in torque angle during the preceding preceding interval plus the accelerating power at the beginning of the interval so this particular interval into this constant okay so these two values are the uh, previous uh, values of the previous interval and this is the present interval so you are trying to find out the present value with the previous value that you have already obtained now this is the change in delta now you have to find out delta so in order to find the delta at the present interval it will be given by delta in previous interval plus hmm, delta delta that we have obtained the change during that interval okay suppose this is delta n minus 1 is 20 degrees so you will get the change as 2 degrees so your delta n new value will be 22 degrees hmm? the delta has increased by 2 degrees so that's why you get that's why you get it okay so delta n is already we calculated so these equations are known as recursive equations you are using the concept of recursion to uh, find out an approximate swing curve okay now the process can be repeated to find out the values for other intervals also hmm? for p a n delta delta of n plus 1 that is the next interval and delta n plus 1 hmm? generally you will be considering time period as 0 0.05 seconds so you can get or increase the accuracy by reducing the time period now you you can have uh, discontinuity hmm, in two forms discontinuity in the sense uh, change in your power that is you are having a steady state condition suddenly your power is varying so while you are considering the time period if your change in power discontinuity occurs at the middle of the interval hmm, can be hmm, you are assuming that your power is constant from middle of one interval to middle of the other interval okay and if your discontinuity is occurring at the middle of the interval you have no issues hmm? you can easily find out the value because you are uh, already that discontinuity is between these two fixed values or constant values but if you have a discontinuity the start of the interval so this is the start of an interval this is the next interval okay so if you have a discontinuity at the beginning of the interval here you have a discontinuity a sudden change is here so if you have a discontinuity at the beginning of the interval what you sh what you should be doing is you have to find out the or you have to consider uh, the value of accelerating power just before and just after the discontinuity hmm? then you have to take the average of that hmm? that is 
PA just before assuming that you are having a steady state condition so under a steady state condition your PA is 0 because your PM is equal to P okay now after disturbance you will be having some PA value hmm? some positive value assume assuming that you have some positive value now what will be uh, the net PA that will be hmm, the average of this these two values initial value and the uh, uh, value of PA just after the disturbance PA0 plus PA0 minus plus PA0 plus this is PA0 minus this is PA0 plus just before the disturbance and just after the disturbance okay and generally just before the disturbance your PA0 is minus is 0 because you have a constant uh, or your PM is equal to P just before the disturbance now we'll just take up an example and we'll try, try to understand it so you have a 20 MVA 50 Hz generator is delivering 18 meg megawatt PM equal to 18 megawatt over a double circuit line to infinite bus generator has a kinetic energy of 2.52 megajoules per MVA and the transient reactance of the generator is 0.35 per unit each transmission line has a 0.2 per unit each on a 20 MVA base and the voltage at the generator side is 1.1 per unit and at the infinite bus is 1 per unit you have a 3 phase fault at the middle of one of the transmission lines okay now you have to obtain the swing curve hmm, for a over a period of 0.5 seconds so from the occurrence of fault up to 0 0.5 seconds you have to obtain the variation so you can uh, you are trying to find out this using the step by step method so first we will be calculating m gh by 1 f so we will be getting this value so we can assume delta t to be 0 0.05 seconds now delta t by m can be delta t squared by m can be calculated because this is a fixed value so we will be getting 8.929 delta t squared by m so this is required for our calculation only p is varying this is fixed now the recursive questions are delta n is equal to delta n minus 1 plus delta delta n so the previous value of delta and the change in the present interval gives you the present value of delta now what will be eh? now this is the equation delta n is equal to delta n minus 1 plus delta delta is given by uh, this one hmm? pa n minus 1 into delta t squared by m so that is the final equation that you should be using it. now the preferred hmm, reactances can be found out as 0.45 per unit how will you get that the reactance from this point up to this point hmm? entire reactance can be 0.45 unit and uh, PE can be calculated hmm? electrical power can be calculated as 1.1 into 1 that is EV by X into sine delta hmm? X is the hmm? reactance that is delivered uh, and the reactants and from this you can calculate sine delta hmm? initially PE is equal to PM so from that you can calculate the value of delta 0 now during fault what happens you have a fault at this point hmm? now you have to in order to find out the value of reactance you have to solve this circuit and in solving the circuit you will be get you have to apply star delta conversion at this point okay once you apply the star delta conversion you will be getting the equivalent value of reactance as 1.25 so this we have already discussed so 1.25 from this you will be getting pe is equal to 0 0.88 sin delta this is during fault this is uh, just before the fault or the pre-fault value now before the occurrence of the fault hmm, PE will be equal to PM that is 2.44 sin delta 0 is equal to 0 0.9 0 0.9 is the uh, per unit value of power that is 18 megawatt is converted into 0 0.9 per unit divided by 20 MB 
now delta 0 will be 21.64 so this is a starting point of delta so delta is currently at 21.64 now you have to calculate the new delta now, now you have discontinuity hmm, at the middle of the uh, so, sorry uh, the middle of the interval hmm, at the beginning of the interval so your pa0 is 0 pa0 plus is given by uh, 0.9 Hmm, minus this value hmm. just after the incident has occurred fault has occurred you have 0.9 pm and this is p so that difference is given by hmm, because your delta is cannot change suddenly so just after the fault also your delta is same but your reactance varies because you have a fault condition and your reactance that is seen by the generator varies so that curve varies and your equation varies you have to consider the second equation and you will be getting ps0 plus as 0.576 per unit now you are taking the average pa average will be equal to 0 that is initial ps0 minus plus ps0 plus divided by 2 that is 0.288 will be the average pa now delta delta 1 is given by mm, so this is your mm, delta delta 0 that is 0 initially there is no change plus p average into delta t by m t squared by m so 0.288 into 8.929 that we have already obtained so will be giving you 2.57 degrees so delta at the first interval is given by initial value of delta delta 0 plus delta delta n or delta 1 is can be taken as delta delta 1 so this is your delta 1 hmm, at 0 0.05 so in this way you can further do the calculations hmm. okay so this is the point that we have taken hmm. so you have a change and a new value of delta has been obtained okay initially starting point so this is pa and this is the other value and this is delta delta so summing them together you will get new delta here okay so that's what we have done 24.21 that is obtained here so this, this will be the starting point for the next set of calculations okay which is starting at starting at a time period of 0 0.05 so in this way you can proceed Okay, and uh, we can get a curve something like this. Mm. Now remember this curve is a plot between delta and time. Again this curve also has been discussed in the, one of the earlier lectures, this particular curve. Okay, so we have considered it up to 0.5. Now here you can see that uh, for a sustained fault, so if your fault is sustaining, your delta continues to increase and it will be uh, you can predict that your delta will be going up to 160 degrees which will be obviously uh, leading to an asynchronous kind of operation so this is a prediction that we do on paper so if you allow to uh, remain the fold for long time your system may lose stability so if you we can also do a calculation uh, also do um, calculation by assuming that your fault is being cleared at some value at some point so that you will have a different curve so your curve will be looking something like this initially your delta has increased then later your delta will decrease so you have a stable condition so in such a way also you can have an analysis and that particular analysis is given in Nagrath Kothari so you can go through that the further solution of the problem so thank you.